Hi guys, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Chemical Monitoring and Management video series. We're going to jump around a little bit with these videos because there's a few that are already on the website for you to have a look at. Most of those are a little bit long um, and uh, we have been trying to cut the videos down in length since then. So I will replace them as we go along, but obviously if they're already there, they're going to be something that I'm just going to um, tap into every now and again and try and tidy up a little bit for you. Because the information is there, probably a little more comprehensive than you need, um, but at least uh, some of the key things. However, there's a few places where I think an extra video here or there might be useful, or at least to focus on some key concepts. And so, in this video, I just want to have a little bit of a look at identifying unknown ions. So in class, the key things that you, you need to do is to uh, do, carry out a number of flame tests and also uh, precipitation reactions to see if you can start to get an idea of the patterns for how certain types of cations and anions behave in solution. But more importantly, you actually need to be able to um, carry out a series of steps in an unknown solution to identify that particular solution. Now sometimes that makes life a little bit easy. For example, if the solution is a blue colour, then there's a reasonable um, chance that it has copper ions in it. So I would still carry out the different tests in order to confirm that, that it is actually copper present. Um, uh, you could carry out a flame test in order to identify the characteristic colour of the copper flame, but I would also identify these steps um, to make sure that you've confirmed what you believe, um, and that is that the solution is blue. It's not only uh, copper solutions that are blue, but mostly and certainly in your experience. And from the choices we have available, definitely uh, copper is the only one that has uh, blue colour in solution. Both um, forms of iron, the ferric and the ferrous iron. So ferrous is uh, the iron 2, and ferric is iron 3. I'll write that underneath uh, ferric. For iron 3 and ferrous for iron 2. Uh, these two also have uh, distinctive colour in solutions. So what should we do? Well what we need to do when we're identifying ions is we need to have a series of steps that we're going to carry out. So the first one is this one. We add some hydrochloric acid. Now what that's putting in is a chloride ion. And we know that most chlorides are soluble. One of the exceptions to that though is lead. So lead will precipitate out. This will be our white precipitate that we will get. And that will help us to identify that the lead is the one that's present in the solution. So hydrochloric acid gets the lead out nice and easy. That leaves us a choice of calcium, barium, the two forms of iron, and uh, copper. Now from here, we can, um, I guess, uh, identify a few different types of things going on. Firstly, uh, if there is a white precipitate, then that will be the lead. We can remove that. Uh, then we can carry on and use the filtrate. So the solution, any ions that are still present in the solution, uh, may uh, therefore remain in the filtrate, pass through the filter paper, and we can collect those. Um, if we then add sulfuric acid, what this is doing is it's adding sulfate ions. The sulfate ions are going to create a white precipitate. The problem with this white precipitate is we do not know whether or not it is calcium or barium. Now again, we can test the flames, but sometimes the flame, flame tests can be a little bit compromised with contaminants that are there. So you need to be very careful using flame testing as your sole determinant of your ions. One of the things that's a little bit uh, alternative that we can do is instead of just getting that white precipitate so we know whether there's calcium or barium present, uh, we could add a solution of sodium fluoride. This will precipitate out with the fluoride ions, the calcium, um, but not the barium, provided we have a uh, positive test. So we know that both were present or potentially both were present. Um, we know that there's only calcium if the um, sodium fluoride forms that white precipitate. Now on the opposite side of this is what happens if it is neither lead, uh, calcium or barium, um, is we can add some sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide is adding hydroxide ions. Now this is very nice because the three substances that are going to precipitate for you here are going to precipitate with really nice colours. Okay, so the brown colour is characteristic of ferric ions, so the 3 plus ion. The green colour is characteristic of the 
ferrous iron, the Fe2 plus iron, and of course the blue color, as we mentioned before, is the copper sulfate. So it's important that you have a sequence that you can follow to identify each of these cations. Likewise, we need to do the same thing for the anions. And I don't want to go through the whole process again, but hopefully what we see when we go through this process is, first of all, um, nitric acid is added first of all for the nitrate ions. We know that the nitrate ions, all nitrates are soluble, so there's going to be no precipitate. But we also know that an acid and a carbonate will produce carbon dioxide gas and will get bubbles or effervescence. So the carbonates are easily identified with the addition of the acid. If it doesn't, then what we want to do next is we want to get out the sulfate ions. We know barium uh, will precipitate the sulfates, but not the other two. So if we get a precipitate um, by the addition of barium nitrate, then we know the sulfates there. So we've only got two left. The addition of silver nitrate is going to um, precipitate a white precipitate of silver chloride if chloride ions are present, but not if the um, phosphate ions are present. Now the last step here is for confirmation. Obviously if you've eliminated the carbonate and the sulfate and the chloride, the assumption we're going to make is that the last one is the phosphates. We know that all nitrates are soluble, so anything we do is not going to produce us any precipitates. But that test is also there just as a confirmation test. In your practical task, you will have to identify a couple of unknown solutions by identifying what steps or what tests you're carrying out. And from the results of those tests, what your conclusions are. A two flow charts like these are fairly useful as um, tools to helping you memorize these two processes and therefore identifying any unknown ions in solution. Thanks for watching.